Hey everybody out there, welcome back to another edition of Advancement Live, coming to you live from the grounds of uh, Thomas Jefferson's University of Virginia here in Charlottesville, Virginia. I am thrilled to be having Advancement Live at a special time tonight. It is, of course, 9 p.m. Uh, on Monday evening to accommodate what is potentially a massive live viewing audience over uh, on their lunch break in Australia. Uh, Kat May, Osaran Hannah, my other guest is in D.C. So we have uh, our D.C. guest here, uh, myself in Charlottesville, and uh, Daniel Brennan, who I'll introduce, uh, in St. Lucia, Queensland, Australia, at my alma mater, the University of Queensland. And I was just joking around with uh, Daniel and Kat May before the, the show started that I think I'm going to, no, I'm going to go ahead and give my first $100 ever uh, to the University of Queensland. So all my uh, all my UQ alumni relations friends over there, uh, this this is uh, the the start of a very uh, beautiful relationship, I think. Right, Kat, man, what do you think? Absolutely, <laughs> thank you so Perfect. much. Perfect. <laughs> sounds, sounds good from the team here on the call. Uh, Advancement Live is a weekly show for higher ed development, engagement, and communication professionals. We broadcast on the Higher Ed Live network suite of channels. Normally, of course, uh, Advancement Live is uh, on at 1 p.m. Tuesdays here in the United States. That's uh, deep into the night in Australia time, so that wasn't going to work. So if you are here in the States watching us, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will promote the rebroadcast of the uh, of the show tomorrow at one in the afternoon. Before we get started, a couple words from our sponsors. iModules is one of the uh, great sponsors of Advancement Alive, and iModules software is the leading constituent engagement management provider for educational institutions. iModules delivers an integrated online platform that transforms how institutions strengthen constituent relationships and achieve fundraising success. And Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner, a marketing and communications firm that works with education institutions on branding, strategy, web design, and much more. Okay, so sponsors thanks, uh, thanked. I have uh, the technology working great. Uh, let's introduce Daniel Brennan. He is over at the University of Queensland. Uh, again, my alma mater, Daniel, has a background in event management and marketing, working in education and community engagement. An opportunity to move to San Francisco saw him end up at Stanford University as the Assistant Director of Admissions for Marketing and Communications. That sounds like a good gig. Primarily focusing on yield, Daniel managed Admit Weekend, a hosted three-day event on campus for more than 3,000 visitors. Uh, and involved over 1,500 student volunteers. Uh, with a young family, he decided to move back to his hometown and pursue his interest in experiential marketing and engagement at UQ. Experiential marketing, Daniel, that sounds like a good part of a job description right there. <laughs> it is. It is a good buzzword. <laughs> I guess we'll get into a little bit more about that. Uh, but experiential marketing and engagement at UQ as the manager of alumni programs in 2012. And Katne Osaran Hanna uh, joined the University of Queensland as Director of Advancement USA here April in, of, uh, in April of 2012 and was appointed Executive Director and Corporate Secretary of the Foundation in the fall of 2012. With more than 25 years of experience as an advancement professional both in higher education and the nonprofit sector, she brings a wide range of skills to UQ. Katme oversees implementation of UQ's North America strategy, which we're going to talk all about this evening, and leads the university's advancement activities, including fundraising and philanthropy, alumni and community relations, and holds a pivotal role in the administration of the UQ in America Foundation. All sorts of good stuff going on. Uh, but Daniel, we were going to start the program off with a discussion about your Future Alumni Leaders Program. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the idea behind the program and what you guys are uh, have set for goals? Um, yeah, so last year we piloted a program called our Future Leaders Program, and that came about through an idea I had uh, sitting in on a uh, Student Leaders Welcome event um, that I was invited to. So that was sort of welcoming club and uh, society executives to, to the university and helping them to support their a year of, of engaging with their students and while I was sitting there I thought that we 
uh, didn't really have a bookend to that event, and that you know there were so many great uh, students here on campus that were sort of letting letting our uh, walk off campus without truly uh, capturing their their experiences and and their knowledge and, and those sorts of things. So from there, we tried to identify some really engaged students who, in theory, are our, going to be our engaged alumni or young alumni. So we look to try and find out about them and about their stories and, and try to document that before they, they graduated and, and walked off campus. That's fantastic. I, I think that's a great idea. And So the Future Leaders, uh, Future Alumni Leaders Program is about engaging UQ's Beth both domestically and internationally. So I was wondering when we were talking about the show beforehand, what is what are some of the qualities of the best that you're looking for in terms of um, these alumni leaders you've identified? Uh, I suppose we're sort of trying to go beyond uh, just the academic uh, achievements of the students. There's, there's lots of ways students can be recognized for their academic achievements. Um, but there's lots of people that, or lots of students that do things on campus that they're not necessarily recognized for. Um, so they might be the, the president of the student union for a year and you know, their GPA might suffer for that, but their contribution to the university is invaluable. Um, so we want to sort of capture all those things that are happening on campus and the excellent and amazing stories that they have. So whether it's being a president of a student club or society, uh, whether it's being a, a fundraiser, both either on campus or off campus, um, and whether they're doing amazing things in research or academics, just trying to capture all these other things that happen outside of the classroom and these extracurricular activities. Yeah, uh, and I think that you know the extracurriculars are a huge part of you know not only what makes a fun uh, academic environment or I should say a good fun university environment, but a lot of it's what you really remember about you know after you've graduated and moved on is the social extracurricular connections. How do these local future leaders, how are they going to be recruited uh, for the Young Alumni Advisory Board? I think you said, Daniel, that you guys have a local group of alumni uh, that you're looking to put to work. Yeah, so last year, our, our pilot year, we identified 200 um, of our graduating students that we identified as future leaders. Um, and then hopefully we'll, we'll be building a program of events and initiatives for them. Um, and then following on from that as sort of the next step, is that there's a young uh, alumni advisory board. Um, and that's a group of about 20 young alumni who are a little bit more established in their careers. Uh, but they're uh, hopefully uh, the Future Leaders Program is a, is a talent pool uh, for, for that young, young alumni advisory board. So and then we can bring them on uh, once they've established their careers and really get their, their advice and, and use them uh, and their experiences to drive what our strategy is with young alumni. Mm -hmm. And sort of just thinking about um, a, young alum, a young alumni advisory board that's locally, are you thinking about having them put together a, a series of networking events? Uh, how are, you said that some folks will be deployed for fundraisers. Uh, sort of a, a question that's uh, uh, not necessarily on our uh, pre-call list, Daniel, but if you could talk through some of the, the strategies uh, as far as how you're going to um, use the Young Alumni Bo Advisory Board and sort of uh, build that program? Um, I think, I suppose, primarily it's going to be a, a networking and a mass engagement tool for us. I suppose that's the, the primary thing that we want to do with our young alumni is to ensure that they remain connected with the university. Um, and then as we get a little bit more sophisticated and robust in terms of taking that program to the next level in terms of introducing some uh, fundraising ideas and definitely the terms of reference that we have for the Young Alumni Advisory Group is that there are uh, ideas of pursuing fundraising initiatives and I think uh, something that we would like to try uh, with that group is definitely crowdsourcing or, or crowdfunding. Um, so we're looking to introduce that idea at some point but you know, as, a, as an advisory board we really want them to, to drive the agenda and, and tell us what young alumni want to do and, and how we should go about doing it. So I think we're going to uh, really rely on their network uh, to, to channel all that feedback through the, through the board uh, to us. Yeah, that, that's great. And so you've got uh, an alumni base locally who are active and helping to establish the network of alumni uh, locally in Brisbane and abroad. 
Uh, Daniel, do you find that um, UQ uh, has a loyal alumni base at this moment? There are, are there lots of uh, folks who are actively looking to engage, or do you have to call the, the Young Alumni uh, Council, for example, the, the advisory board? Are these folks who will need convincing, uh, or would you say there's a, a really vibrant alumni network? Um, I suppose from my experience is that we have a tremendous amount of goodwill here on, uh, amongst our alumni community. Um, they probably just don't really know how to engage with us or how to get involved and how to volunteer. And I suppose that's our challenge is to, to get that message out there. Um, but for example, when we recruit speakers for student events and, and we approach alumni in the local areas, that they're, they're really flattered when we get in contact with them um, and they're, they're very happy to help out. Um, I don't think we've had anyone turn us down yet. So that sort of demonstrates to me that there's a tremendous will and capacity to, to give back and be involved in the university. It's just a matter of them finding a, finding a channel and a way to do that. So. Um, there's lots of great people out there who want to do great things, so we just need to, to find a way to, to harness all of that energy. Yeah, yeah. So it's a whole sort of a, 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 a new volunteer management strategy too to go along to go along with that. Absolutely. What are the differences, would you say, between how you work to engage Brisbane-based alums or even Australian uh, natives uh, as opposed to your international contingent uh, at the university? I remember. UQ being a, a very international place. Uh, I think all of my little group projects were from folks around the world when I was at UQ, mm -hmm. and so I have to imagine, you know, a strategy that is uh, domestic and international is fairly robust, right? Yeah, we definitely have a lot of alumni based here in Brisbane, but in saying that, we do have a sizable community uh, overseas. So obviously, we use uh, the internet as much as we can, uh, but in saying that. Um, you know, as wonderful as technology is, it it's never replaces that that face-to-face uh, -face yeah. communication, and that's why people like Capme and and our officers around the world and our representatives that are in various countries are, are really important to that relationship, and and also for us visiting other countries and, and getting uh, having time to spend with alumni while we travel abroad is is definitely really important. So. Um, the fact is that Australia is usually a long way away from everywhere else, so it takes a long way, long time for us to get anywhere. So um, when we do travel, we tr we try and make the most of it. <laughs> that makes, that does make sense. I remember <laughs> it being I remember it being a very long uh, ride and, and one that you have to really mentally prepare for just to uh, exactly. to go from the states to Australia. Kame, how many times have you been over to Australia? Oh, three times, and three. I'll be going in March. Um, yeah, I do think um, that you know what uh, Daniel is talking about. It's really important to underline that the alumni relations program is is very um, fairly young at, at UQ, and and what they uh, what Gina and Daniel and and the team have done in the short time um, that they have been there is is just tremendous. Um, so we've been growing alumni relations in the past really two years um, in the outreach and, 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 and reaching out to all of the alumni, whether in Brisbane or internationally. Um, so there's a lot more to do. And, and yes, alumni are looking to ways to be engaged, and, and especially when you're international and in North America, you know, people like you, Ryan, are, are excited to hear when you two call. They want to know what their alma mater is doing and what's going on in Australia. Um, so it's, it's very important to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, direct contact. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. I, and I think, um, I think you're right, and I think obviously um, affinity towards a university takes many shapes and forms for everybody, right? And for some folks, it, it forms immediately as they are exiting the university. They can they, they really are feeling it, and for others, you know, it takes a number of years to develop. Uh, it's hard to believe it's been seven years uh, for me. And um, but one of the things that's getting into this work in alumni relations is has been working. Uh, to find out what folks in Australia are doing, and um, uh, and I think you guys have um, a lot of really exciting uh, alumni relations work happening over in, in your side of the world, and I wanted to make sure 
we were highlighting it here. The the other uh, Kame, the other uh, sort of next obvious question is um, things have progressed fairly quickly uh, with the alumni relations work, and and here is UQ North America, uh, which I think sort of uh, popped in front of my attention um, not too long ago, right? Could you give a little bit about the history of uh, UQ North America and uh, what it's like to work for an Australian university here in the States? Yeah, um, UQ North America was established about, oh, I'd say about two years ago. Um, and it was really uh, what I call a brilliant uh, concept of two divisions uh, on on campus between the international division, global engagement, and the division of advancement. It was a combination uh, of a physical office. In, uh, Daniel uh, alluded to offices around the world, but they're really international offices. They don't combine advancement and um, international together. They're more about the global engagement of admissions and recruitment, and, and some of them have different remits. But our remit here in, in North America is really about pushing a substantive agenda um, of collaboration in research with um, philanthropic institutions um, to advance philanthropy, but also to build on um, uh, partnerships with higher education institutions, with foundations and corporations, as well as multilateral organizations and NGOs. And certainly, last but not least, alumni and friends. Um, we have um, 8,000, a little over 8,000 alumni in both uh, Canada and the US. And that includes uh, study abroad and exchange students. Um, and for the most part, they're um, Americans, I mean, people like yourself who either are full degree graduates or, uh, like I said, uh, graduate, uh, I mean, study abroad and uh, exchange students. Um, so the university did see that need for the investment in a physical office. Yeah, it, it does make sense, Kame. What, what have been some of the early successes that you guys have had, um, sort of, um, with the formalization of UQ North America? Yeah, and what's special about UQ North America is what I neglected to mention is the establishment of the 501c3 nonprofit organization, which is a U.S. nonprofit entity that allows U.S. citizens to, and, and foundations and others to give tax deductible donations. So, some of the, on that realm, in terms of philanthropy, we have received uh, a $10 million um, gift, for instance, uh, from an alum, from a corporation that's led by an alum. We've also received a million dollar from an alumni, alumnus, um, an individual gift. So those are, are very important milestones for us that we have been able to engage um, this board of the foundation that has doubled in its number from prominent alumni or noted alumni in the U.S. Um, that have been working board members. In, in other words, they're not just board members for the sake of being board members. Um, so they, they do events in their homes, they open their Rolodexes, they open doors for us, whether they're in the corporate realm or with NGOs or with foundations or with multilaterals. Um, what we've been doing We've done mass engagement events, but we, what more so we focus on is the targeted events with alumni um, that work in those institutions, whether they are on the board of the foundation or um, they are uh, people that we have been building relationships. Because yeah. in the end, alumni engagement and community relation engagement is about those building a relationship. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's absolutely right. Uh, and it's a very exciting time uh, for the University of Queensland. I, I wanted to um, feel like I'm a part of it, and I think that um, you know that's exactly the point, right? I, I think that um, there, you guys got you guys have something going there, and um, it makes people want to. Um, uh, think back, uh, if not travel back, right, uh, to uh, Australia and to the University of Queensland here from the United States. I, I know my experience there was too short. 
Um, so, uh, Kat May, how do you stay connected to the University of Queensland, given the fact that you work in DC? I mean, I here I am. I'm back in my office, uh, and I, you know, tucked my kid into bed before I could uh, come here to to do the show. And so, what? How do you keep in touch? Well, um, quite a few of these uh, <laughs> Skype calls uh, over yeah. the internet happen almost. Every week, I would say, um, a lot of emails, but I think the most important part is really the visits to Brisbane that we talked about earlier. Um, I feel like that, that's what I get the most out of, and when my colleagues visit here. Um, we have about two executive missions um, a year that where our president and other senior delegates uh, from UQ come. Um, and so those are the ways we really keep in contact. I gotta say, it is challenging. It's not, you know, it's not all, you know, <laughs> a bed of roses. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure it's challenging. I mean. um, so there is that challenge, but we do keep at it, and we all recognize that there is an issue there. So we we all try to keep at yeah. it. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And, and and obviously, you know, one of the conversations I had with Leonie Boxtel from the University of Melbourne when she was on Advancement Live, and some of the the differences in culture when it comes to fundraising, uh, and things are not in Australia like they are here uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, but what is your sort of take, Kat May, on where uh, fundraising in the U.S. differs uh, from that in Australia? Um, I think, I mean, here in the U.S. we're so used to, we've been doing it so long, especially in higher education institutions. Alumni, you know, and, and annual giving, alumni relations, um, major gifts, principal gifts, um, you know, universities who are Ivy Leagues and, and bigger universities, even UVA, you know, you have so many staff. Uh, members that, you know, I know Princeton, you know, when you apply, you get assigned a development officer and an alumni officer. That's not the case in Australia. That certainly is not the case at UQ. <laughs> I mean, we are what, what I call a lean machine that is really trying its hardest. I mean, this future leaders program is something that's very good and very excellent in terms of the investment for the future, in terms of the you know, return on investment or bringing back um, the alumni in investing in their alma mater. Here in the U.S., it's sort of like the back of your hand, you know? Yeah. You get involved in a senior class gift, you get involved in even as a freshman in giving, um, we have a parents fund, etc. It's all it's sort of a given. Um, in Australia, it's not that there isn't a giving culture, and Daniel can chime in. I think there is a giving culture, but it's not to higher education. It's Definitely. more to disasters, to human interest, to humanitarian issues. I think what in UQ and what we're trying to do, and especially I think with UQ North America and the University of Queensland, is that we need to elevate our profile in terms of what we are doing in transformational impact globally. And we are impacting society and changing it for the better. And, and this is what we need to be communicating, whether in Australia or here. And that's what we're trying to do. And I think once we start doing that more and instituting more you know, this giving back into your alma mater to, and I'm not talking about the value of the degree, et cetera, and those are all important issues, um, but those are all going to be new to Australians. That yeah. is a given here in the U.S. I think we need to take the route that we're really transformationally impacting the world. Hmm. Daniel, what's your take? Yeah, I think I definitely uh, Australians are, are good at, at giving. Um, but it's usually in those sort of as Kat may said in terms of humanitarian causes and those sorts of things. I know um, a couple of years ago there was uh, an extensive flood here in Brisbane, and um, there was a tremendous amount of support, both financially and and of time and resources, to help the city get back on its feet. Um, but the concept of giving to your university is quite new and quite 
even quite foreign to, to many Australians because of the, the funding models that um, have been set up um, mm -hmm. historically. So it's, a, it's an education process and as much as, as trying to educate people about how the funding models of university are changing and, and the role and impact universities can have on, on society globally. Yeah. And it was, and I was uh, reflecting with Daniel when we had our, our pre-show call about um, sort of those those differences. I remember vividly when I was running on the the track at the University of Queensland one afternoon, uh, and I was uh, approached by someone who wanted me to pay to run on the track. Uh, and you know, this is this is this is UQ Sport. This is you know, a pre it's not the university. Uh, it's a separate entity or a nonprofit and. Uh, they function on revenue just like everybody else, and but here at the United States, in the United States, all the academic or all the athletic uh, facilities are are almost always included. Uh, slightly disconnected to the um, the bigger point about um, you know, fundraising uh, for a cause as opposed to fundraising uh, and giving to your alma mater, but. You know, uh, Daniel, with that in mind, sort of circling uh, towards the idea of success measurements. Um, things are going well. Things have, uh, are new ideas are on the table. Um, what are uh, some of the success measurements that uh, you and the alumni relations team are hoping to look at and report on uh, for UQ moving forward over the next couple of years? Well, I think obviously we're we're doing the the base at the moment in terms of discounting uh, numbers of participation and those sorts of things. And I think um, over the last 12 months we've really put a conscious effort into trying to document that as best as possible. And it's not just about the people that are coming to the events and initiatives that, that we're running, but it's all those things that we support. So we might necessarily, not necessarily run an event, but we also you know, we might give support to an event. and whether it be one of our international alumni associations running an event and we'll, we'll help them with communications, but we don't, in the past, we haven't tracked uh, mm -hmm. that participation or that effort that has gone into supporting that. So over the last 12 to 18 months, we've really tightened that up to, mm -hmm. to see exactly what it is that we are doing. And um, as we've moved forward, we need to get a little bit more sophisticated in terms of measuring that level of engagement and, and what has been the result of it. So that's the challenge we have at the moment. So we're looking to develop new measures as, as we speak. Yeah, I think that that's um, you know measuring sort of the engagement, the the event attendance. Kat May, what's what's the um, the approach with UQ North America as far as um, the the number of networking events you guys try to set up in the U.S. Um, and and sort of how uh, how are you measuring attendance success for those events, perhaps? Well, I mean, events, I think, in, in the U.S. are probably, I mean, you might know this already, we are, we are in such a competitive market and, yeah. and we have them. I mean, we have in mass engagement events, we've had 100 people attend an event, and for us, that's quite successful. Yeah. Um, but I think what's more important is the number of volunteers that participate, you know, that self-identify that you know when we do a call for volunteers and they say yes I'm coming so what we need to measure is is how many people are really engaged with us who accept our calls to visit who we are talking with and getting them more involved um, whether in in the board in the foundation in participating and giving I mean that's a big big measurement in terms of participation of giving among alumni and yeah. in the community. Um, so those are our goals, you know, in terms of participation. Um, and we will go with what alumni relations measurements are in terms of engagement. So we are part and parcel of what they do in Brisbane. So they're going to measure what we're all doing globally. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I think for, from our point of view in North America, I think participation and giving is going to be very important, and then engagement and volunteerism and and like I have a um, several alumni in San Francisco who self-identified as as wanting to run um, an event and do a panel discussion um, mm -hmm. themselves and do it all by themselves from among alumni who are really stars in their own field. We yeah. did the same thing in New York, 
know, so. Um, that, that's great. And so, and guys, given where you guys are operationally, um, and you, you mentioned, Kame, that you had a few of the San Francisco folks step up and say, we want to put on an event. Are you also suggesting that they try to formalize a, we call it a chapter or a club, a networking group, or where are things now? No, um, I don't think we will ever really move into a formalized kind of an alumni association at this point. We're not there yet. I know that Gina and I have talked about what we're calling an alumni advisory groupings across the United States and Canada, and we will be moving towards that. Um, but this is, you know, we're just going slowly but surely there because we don't want them to just pop up and fizzle. And they really need to have proper resources, you know, um, backing them up. So we're doing it in a slow manner, you yeah. know, step by step. That makes sense. Do you, Daniel, do you think that there are networking groups, um, sort of a silly question because obviously there probably are, are there networking groups that are, functionally, that are functioning on a more formalized level of UQ alumni, either in Brisbane, uh, in the surrounding towns, uh, in, in Sydney? How, is, how are the, the groups sort of functioning perhaps on their own or how are you guys managing volunteers? Yeah, well, we do have uh, volunteers uh, formally and informally at many different levels. So we do have your traditional uh, alumni association or, or chapter operating in some parts of the world. Um, and then other parts of the world we, we sort of have, uh, have had a variety of success in terms of uh, alumni chapters um, as you would refer to them. Yeah. Um, and what we've discovered I guess in sort of our time here is that there hasn't always been the necessary resources or or sustainability that, to go along with those groups. So what we've you know what we've done and what we've proposed working with Catmay and our other uh, people involved in alumni engagement is that we're really pushing the message that we want to develop something that's sustainable. So without getting too far ahead with establishing formal groups and, and those sorts of things that ultimately bog down the few volunteers that are really and truly engaged and want to help. So yeah. what we've sort of looked to do is to try and create an informal group and really harness that energy without necessarily bogging them down with the, the uh, logistics of, of running an association or a chapter. So sure. Sure. Um, the US is a great example of that, so that we're sort of working with hand in hand with CatMay and the North America office to try and get those groups going and, and leverage what support and interest we do have. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your initiatives that in terms of getting better data on alumni, uh, Daniel? How are you guys uh, switching gears just a little bit using the, the social web, perhaps LinkedIn in particular, as part of your effort? Um, I suppose we're, we're not unique in that we, we all have challenges in terms of data. So I think every university uh, would want better data, I think, and we're not alone in that. So I suppose we're definitely looking at ways social media can, can help us in that, uh, in that phase of development and improving our data. So definitely LinkedIn is, is proving to be a really valuable source of information. Um, so now we're just sort of in the process of working out how we harness that and, and make the best of it uh, for, for everyone's benefit. So I think yeah, LinkedIn has definitely um, proved to be something that's, that's very valuable. So we're, we're trying to work out how to tap into that. Mm -hmm. I just had a question, uh, Kame, or Daniel, this could be for both of you guys. So you, had, you struck a chord with me with the idea of showcasing um, sort of the global impact uh, that UQ, um, the UQ community is making around the world. How, if you were to sort of discover a really profound story, perhaps it's, um, you know, someone working for an NGO somewhere, um, how would you go about um, sharing that story out to the rest of the world, what are some of the, the communication mechanisms you have to dial someone like myself into um, some of those uh, cool stories you discover? Mm. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, so, I don't know. <laughs> sort of a tough question and it wasn't one that we had sort of thought about. But. Daniel, they, uh, I just uh, remind, I don't know who you're going to take as an example, but it reminds me of some of the awards that you gave out. You know, to the alumni. But go on. 
know. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose we have a we have a, an awards program here, like like many universities do. So we look to acknowledge the the amazing achievements of our alumni, and and we certainly have some some people on the world stage that you would recognise straight away, but wouldn't necessarily associate with the University of Queensland. Um, but there there are lots of other people doing amazing work behind the scenes as well at, at a lesser level, but. So we have the awards and we also have our regular communications and we sort of tap into our uh, media and comms team that, that definitely uh, have a lot of tools at their disposal. So we do a, a publication like, like the majority of universities do. So that goes out twice a year and it goes out to uh, all our alumni globally. Um, and then we also, uh, in between those publications, we have regular uh, e-newsletters and those sorts of things. So there's a variety of ways where that, that achievement or that discovery of that new piece of information can work its way up in terms of at different levels, be it you know, communicating that with the wider alumni community or sort of looking to acknowledge that achievement and, and seeing how the university can, can leverage it moving forward. So um, it's really a collaborative effort right across the university from, from the local, from the offices in the North America to the comms teams here and, and the various faculties that are involved. So it's, um, it's about collaborating and, and communicating with those, um, those stakeholders to see what we can do and, and how we can make the most of it. And I've enjoyed reading the, the, the UQ magazine, the alumni magazine that you guys send out. I actually get it here at my work here at the University of Virginia and I always uh, find some time to look through it. Uh, it's definitely enjoyable to get in the mail, and uh, you guys are all doing a nice job putting it together to share, showcase those stories that you're discovering about global impact. Um, so uh, how does the alumni relations team within the university advancement at UQ work uh, in terms of the other schools or departments um, to coordinate engagement and fundraising? I know there's lots of there's a number of different schools and units uh, here at the university. I know that's true at, at Queensland. What are some of the um, the approaches to to keep everybody connected about uh, engagement and fundraising efforts? Uh, so as we we use from our the fundraising side of things, we use a hub and spoke model. So I'm based here in the central office, um, and that's where we deliver uh, mass engagement opportunities for all alumni. Uh, but then each of the, the schools or, or faculties, as we refer to them, um, are resourced differently in terms of you know, the fundraising and alumni engagement that goes on. So um, we definitely work in partnership with each of those faculties and, and uh, whichever the size of the groups that are involved with that. And then I suppose in addition to that is sort of Kat May who works um, in the North America office as well as a spoke. So it, it's really a collaborative effort to try and, and deliver that philanthropic ob objectives as well as the, the alumni engagement. So I suppose Kat May can sort of elaborate and explain what it's like from, from her end as, as being, a, being a spoke. Do you get uh, some of the, the key academics from, you know, see the, the uh, some of the schools traveling to events and giving presentations and therefore it's sort of a, a double billing of, you know, university advancement along with, um, you know, one of the, uh, a key speaker from the, one of the, the faculties? Well, we certainly take advantage of that because whenever we try to keep track of whoever is coming to the United States or Canada and we take advantage of having any of our UQ stars and, and, and ride on that, whether it's in um, an academic framework or with alumni. We just had um, Professor Chris Reed, who's the director of the US UQ Energy Initiative in Houston. So um, he participated in, a, in an energy conference, but we did an alumni event, a targeted alumni event in Houston at which he spoke at. So we definitely take advantage of that. Now, is that it wasn't a fundraising event. It was just a good feeling, you know, good touchy-feely event for alumni, you know, to come together. But the community was also invited and partners as well. So, um, yeah. It's all about taking advantage of the rock stars, right? Oh yeah. When they're when they're in town, you gotta make you gotta put up an event around them and try to uh, try to get people out on the evening. Yeah, leverage, leverage. You know, leverage what you can. We we we, we that is that is my primary function here at the University of Virginia is 
is trying to uh, um, showcase our rock stars and get people to come out and see them. Mm. Um, uh, Daniel, I think in our in our chat before the the show, you mentioned uh, that Gina Wheatcroft, the director of alumni relations at UQ, she's new, and I think you even mentioned you guys started on the same day. That's um, right. But uh, that's really cool, and and she brings a new a perspective uh, because she comes from North America as well, right? She's from uh, one of the Canadian universities. Yeah, University of Alberta. So uh, she came across. Uh, Started the same day as I did, uh, as we said, and she's really um, been able, been a big help to, to our team. So prior to that, we weren't fully resourced, I guess. So I suppose once both of us sort of started, we we're able to really move forward with some of these ideas and and strategies that that were were there, um, and just we didn't have the the resources to to get them started. So it's been. Uh, been a, a quick a quick rise, but uh, there's definitely more to do, and, and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, all sorts of good stuff to do. Um, w w would you guys say, uh, Katma and Daniel, the other institutions in Australia, uh, other universities that that you whose alumni engagement or fundraising work uh, do you guys really admire? Did you have any, Katma? Um, I mean, I you know I only know my colleagues here in, in in the United States, and we work with the University of Melbourne and um, UNSW, um, and and really they're limited because they don't have full time alumni advancement officers. Um, so we're a little bit ahead of the game um, in the sense, like I said earlier about the way you you. I call it, 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 you know, they are, we are trendsetters in terms of what we've done with the, with the UQ office in this country. And I've also worked for other universities with over, you know, who are overseas with the offices in this country who are just pure philanthropy advancement offices. Mm -hmm. um, and this is very unique, this setup. Um, who, let me ask this. So whose vision at UQ has it been to really sort of set the bar uh, in Australia for your alumni relations work? Is there someone, is, is there a couple of great, I'm sure there's a lot of great people, but um, you know, you sort of mentioned that UQ has been charged with uh, forging a trail, uh, you know, in Australia, and I was just curious if um, you can point to some internal um, uh, folks that are really visionaries in that respect. Putting you on the spot, because I didn't actually, <laughs> I didn't ask you to think about that beforehand, that's not really fair. Well, I mean, Daniel can certainly answer that, but I, you know, I, I think you know our pro vice chancellor um, for advancement, Claire Pollard, she certainly you know came in a few years ago, but has really revamped the whole division. Uh, that's great. Yeah. So what is so what does the future look like, guys? Where what's yeah what is UQ advancement? Um, what are we doing? What are we talking about? If we're to do another show about this time next year. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> oh well, ho hopefully we'll we'll have a uh, a full U.S. Uh, strategy with our with our advisory group spread right across uh, the U.S. and sort of really made great strides in in using uh, LinkedIn in particular to engage with a lot of those alumni that we've lost contact with that are doing amazing things. I know, for example, you know we've we've lost contact with a lot of alumni who are now in Silicon Valley um, through through looking on LinkedIn, and they're doing amazing things, um, and they they're just moving a lot quicker than we are in terms of trying to keep up with them. So we we're looking forward to engaging with them over the the next 12 months or so, and and leveraging the the advantages that that social media bring to to advancement and alumni engagement. So we're looking to to really make some great stride with that over the next 12 to 18 months. Excellent. What do you think, Kame? What are, we, what are we talking about next year this time? Well, um, a definitely a very engaged uh, foundation board um, and, and a full social media um, and, you know, engagement and an e-newsletter that goes out and has an opening rate of 50%. Um, and uh, there it is. <laughs> and an alumni database that's um, that is very 
is accurate. No, I'm um, uh, about. I'll give it eighty percent accurate. Um, and good fun. luck with that. <laughs> uh, thank you. And a fundraising at about three million dollars. And those were those were very well done. Well said. I hope. <laughs> I, I hope, and maybe I, but maybe I don't, uh, that you're held to your that your goal is set for for this year and next time. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining uh, Advancement Live tonight. I really appreciated your time and energy uh, and thoughts. Uh, definitely hope that Advancement Live becomes a regular part of your lives and everyone over in Australia. Um, I love connecting with folks over in your part of the world. Uh, and always think highly of it whenever I whenever I think of the University of Queensland. Just before I left uh, to uh, come to Queensland, but before I um, had departed the United States, I met my now wife, who came to visit me a couple of times while I was over in Australia. And so I've got um, some even more sentimental connections with uh, the University of Queensland. So, um, but yeah, no good good stuff and. Um, Thank you so much for, for joining, and we will do it again next time. My colleague, Andrew Gosin, will be back uh, next week, I believe, or sometime uh, in the short term with a show for everybody. And again, Ryan Catherwood coming to you from the University of Virginia. Uh, Daniel Brennan from live from the University of Queensland. Kat May Oseron live in D.C., up late with me. <laughs> um, thanks again, everybody, for your time, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks thank for having you. us. And thank you.